Hello, Morning Rush Regulars. Welcome to tomorrow's show today. Actually, it's Monday's show. Hope you have a great weekend. we got Gamecocks playing this weekend, tomorrow night at home at 8 against Vanderbilt. We should win that one, don't you think? Vanderbilt's on a slide. I hope so. I hope so, too. <laughs> I mean, you know, Gamecocks, you never know. Tigers That's play. That's come and be Gamecock killers, right? Yeah, I know. Tigers play tomorrow afternoon at 2, I think. They're on the road, so you'll be watching that one. Anyway, a lot of good stuff. And baseball scrimmaging, if we get through this weather without uh, with still having a field to play on, without it being too soupy. All right, so now as we get into the weekend, the next week, next weekend, Super Bowl Sunday. Monday, we have an opportunity for you to share with us some of your best tricks for hosting or uh, because I know even if you don't host the party, you know, like we, uh, Sally may go to some other place else, so you always got to show up with something, right? Because there's going to be a bunch of people there eating. Kelly, you show up with stuff? I usually don't. I mean, if so, I'll, I'll say, do you need me to bring something? And if they say, oh, I'll bring beverages or whatever, then I'll bring it. But right. for the most part, I, it's not like I'm going to oh. make something and bring it or, you know, I'll buy a bag of chips or something. But you invited me. There you, supposed to, you put on the party for moi. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, listen, I don't know how you play that, but if you are, if you're going to be taking something or maybe you're making something for everybody, so you've got to have a bunch of different ideas, uh, we got to get coached up for our big Super Bowl parties. Ladies, I'm going to get Sally to write down the recipe, and I guess I need to make a picture of it, although we don't have any football this weekend. No, you do have the impeachment trial. So oh, that's we'll right. we be watching that Saturday. Saturday, I'll be watching it. We'll have an impeachment trial party. Uh, that's always well attended. Is anybody watching that still other than me? I, I was talking to some news people yesterday. Yeah. And they are so frustrated with how boring this is. It's pretty boring. Yeah. And so yeah. you, the most hardcore of news oh, viewers, if you can't watch all of it, it's like, nobody it's like, can. It's like watching a soap opera. You can go for a couple of days without seeing it and just turn it back on. And it's still kind of the same thing. You haven't missed anything. But it's a soap just, opera would at least have some drama and some good-looking people to that's look true. at and all that other stuff. That's this very is true. A bunch of old dudes. Yeah. Uh, president's a <laughs> All right, so anyway, I'll be doing Sally is big into the impeachment party, too. So she and I will make one and I'll take a picture of it. Because everywhere we go, this thing is always getting gets devoured. So this is a really good one. And I only know that because of, I, I always carry the empty dish home. Which is a good thing. Who wants to take home something? You brought it for everybody to eat. Nobody ate it. That's embarrassing. How You want something new to make? Or maybe you got something you could share. We could do that. Or just other stuff you do at the Super Bowl party to make it best. Well, Angela is going to be leaving Sunday for a while. She'll be in California for the next week or so. But I'm going to try to get her to, before she leaves, to give me her cowboy caviar. Ooh, that sounds good. That because it's like, very much like Sally's where she brings it to a party or if we have a party at the house, yeah. that's always the first thing that's cleared out. But we also have the story up on the Morning Rush blog at 975wcos.com. Survey of 2,200 Americans, 91% expect to watch the football game this coming uh, next Sunday. Sure. That's a huge amount of people, and a bunch of them, about 85% of them, expect to go to a party of some sort to watch yeah. it. Uh, with that being said, they love snacks. 70% of people attending Super Bowl parties expect to be served some sort of snack. Yeah. And number one on the list is potato chips and really? tortilla chips. Uh, interestingly enough, they went even potato by city chip. by city. Kansas City loves uh, popcorn. That's the number. The, so the Chiefs fans apparently snack on popcorn. I don't think I've ever had popcorn or served popcorn at a Super Bowl party. This year you might. Step out and live a little. Right? <laughs> Seems a little bland. Popcorn? You can do all kinds of things with popcorn. There's about 18,000 different spices you can put on top of it. Yeah, popcorn is like it's like a canvas. It. You can paint it any way you That's want. That's right. Okay, That's all right. right. Somebody yeah. give me a good popcorn recipe because I, I don't want to waste my time doing mixing it with the bad stuff. I want some really good ones there. San Francisco fans, their number one thing is potato chips. Now, when it comes to dips, number one, salsa. Always. Two, cheese dips. Yeah. Three, French onion dips. And way down at number four is guacamole. Uh, I thought that the way that the guacamole had been marketed was that everybody loved guacamole and ate pounds and pounds of the stuff. Yeah, especially the younger because it is the healthy. Mm -hmm. It's the healthy snack. It is the healthy snack. And I am surprised to see it so low on the list. But we'll find out from you, Mick, because, again, there are reasons oh, yeah. in the country that love certain things over other things. and. Even different cities love certain things. Quick note, we just picked up on it, Kelly. Thank you. 
if you're going to be doing any kind of guacamole mix, you got to get the avocados Monday, That's because right. yeah, because you got to wait. Those things have got to ripen. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you do to help quicken the ripening if process. You buy your avocados on Saturday. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, avocados <laughs> will be gone. <laughs> Kind of like trying to find any kind of cold remedy right now in Colombia. Has everybody got a flu? What's going on? Should cold remedies about, are gone. Speaking of, uh, of things that we could be talking about on Monday, should we do anything about the coronavirus? Because I don't know what to say about it other than the whole world is talking about it. It seems like something out of a horror movie. Well, unfortunately, we have a death in the U.S. now, so it's something that's come to our shores. Um, and then we found out it originated somewhere in a market where in China snake meat or something somebody told me that it was one restaurant serving undercooked snake meat and that i mean what what do you think was going to happen you're eating snake and you wanted it raw you wanted it uh, i think they I'll rattlesnake it, and I'll, stuff uh, i think it, you know just i want a little pink on the inside i have some kansas city fans eating rattlesnake on the midwest they love to eat rattlesnake i don't know how you cook it i've never done that i don't know what kind of snakes they have in china I don't want to find out, and I don't want to eat them. No. But that's what happened, according to some people. But anyway, this coronavirus is apparently, um, unlike any we've seen lately, where if you see the videos from, from China where people are just walking and they drop. Yes. It's like unbelievable. And then blood starts flowing out of them. Yeah, it's like watching uh, World War Z. Okay. I never watched that. Is that the Brad Pitt movie? Yeah. That's a great movie. You never saw that? That's a great movie. Great movie. movie. God, it's a great movie. <laughs> that was a great movie. That's a great movie. Oh, all right. Great. Well, I'll have to check it out. Andrew. It's got to be. Well, I tell you what. Um, I just thought about something. We got the fallen fallen iguanas in Florida. Maybe you want to try some. Um, maybe they got the coronavirus. Be maybe careful. that's what it is. Because uh -uh. you what told happened. me that the people are eating the iguanas down there. They now. just fell. But it's weird because they're too cold and they kind of go into some sort of weird. I like setting off rumors. Oh, do you? <laughs> People from Florida hitting 95 coming to South Carolina right now. Get away from the coronavirus iguanas. Oh, we got to do the moral to them on Monday because we got a problem for a morning rush or regular who is caught in the middle in another relationship drama. Yeah, this is, uh, and this is a bad one. Um, she's been best friends, or one of her best friends, for a number of years. Kids are growing up together. Uh huh. Type of thing. Husband and, and you know they they double dating and they're hanging out and anyway one day he made a pass at her uh oh and she's in a quandary do I right, tell right. my friend that your husband made the pass at me because if I if I her perspective is if I tell her yeah. she's already told me that if he's that kind of guy the whole the, the marriage is over and I'm moving the kids like we're gonna be out of here she doesn't want to lose her best friend she doesn't uh, want to see the family wow. destroyed. She thinks that the guy may actually only be hitting on women who are already in a close relationship with the wife because they won't tell. And they all know. Mm. And they don't want to see the home broken up. That's an interesting strategy, Cotton. <laughs> may work. For those of you who are not familiar with Cotton, that's an uh, inside <laughs> reference to the movie Dodgeball that we yeah. have to quote from time to time. That's some interesting action, Cotton. Yeah. Very interesting. Oh, so now what do you do? If you're the woman, do you tell your best friend? Knowing that her, she's going to pack up and leave and take the kids with her. You know, so break really up the home. You. It hurts you. Yeah. You're going to lose your friend. She's going to be mad at you, too, because it's going to be, you know, your friend's going to say, oh, well, she had to do something to bring that on. I, I don't know if that's one of the concerns. I just know that she doesn't want to lose her friend. Um, she doesn't want to see the two, the kids that are growing up together have that broken up. They're kind of, oh. uh, it's all going to be ruined. This is a obviously the guy's fault. Oh yeah, yeah, but it's, totally. Do I want to participate in this? She's already rebuffed him, made it very clear. Don't, don't do this to me. And, this uh, is a moral dilemma. Mm -hmm. And they say all guys think alike, so maybe we got to want to make sure they find herself in this situation. Oh. Well, I would hope not. How did you handle it? Yeah. Bob Harper, the uh, trainer from The Biggest Loser. You see him these days on television because he had a heart attack and he advertised Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was in good shape and still had a heart attack. Anyway, he's got a... Uh, that a, show was on, what, like a decade ago? I Biggest Loser? I, I didn't watch on, it. Isn't it? Oh, okay, I, I never watched it. I it back in the day. I haven't watched it in a number of years. Anyway, he says that the new series or the new episodes are going to be kind of a reboot. He says that the research shows that they don't like the the yelling the trainers, they want the trainers to tone it down. Encouraging trainers. More of encouragement. 
Oh, come on, Tumbleweed, you can lift you can lift two more. Just give me two more, little buddy. And so I'm just thinking, two. and re, I was thinking about my own life. Uh, I, would I rather watch that? Probably. I don't know. I actually did like when Jillian Michaels would call you like a fat slob and <laughs> kick you in the butt or whatever. But um, I, I know that for me personally, when I work with trainers, the ones that are the most brutal, those are the ones that get the most out of me. I don't know what it is. I remember a girl that I, she was never my trainer because of this, because she would yell at the guys, oh, come on, I can do more than that. Oh, oh yeah. See, then, then I'm sure guys hurt themselves. Trying to outlift her. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know That's what kind of a trainer you like, but Bob Harper goes on to say that they're uh, a little bit embarrassed, I guess, of The Biggest Loser because of all these exposés that they do after. Like, let's see what happened to the former right. biggest, you know. And you go back and. These guys lost 100 pounds and then they gained 120 back. Right. Like, how does that happen? So he says, moving forward, not only are we going to give them gym memberships, but we're going to give them nutritionists and, more importantly, support groups. And he support says that groups. about 80%. Now, these are his stats. I don't know if these are factual or not. 80% of people, whether it doesn't matter how you lost the weight, whether it's fast, slow, through working out, strictly diet only, whatever it was, about 80% are going to gain all that weight back. And yeah, we're creatures of habit. We fall back into our same old routine. So he says you need accountability to change your life. And that sounds like a, a, a great plan. It's like, a, it's like when you have um, a new Christian. You baptize, bring them into the church, get them in a small group, get an accountability partner, get a good Bible study, because it's a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. But if because we are human, we fall back into our old ways, backsliding, that's what the Southern Baptists call it. Now look what we did. We didn't really serve you. It's a lot more fun to backslide in the food department, though. I love backsliding <laughs> into some, you know, whatever, some, some chocolate cake. Hey, and if you make a six. guacamole dip that fits in a hot tub, we want to hear about oh, that yeah, for the Super Bowl into party. That. Backslide into it. Kelly's all about Invite him to your party, by the way. Mm -hmm, I'll be there. If you want to bring some chips, I will. A hot tub full of queso. Now we're talking underlay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got to do the more limbo. We're going to do that about six ten, as always, on a Monday. We got people trying to get in the studio over here. This is how much in demand we are. People are trying to come in here. No, it's just the janitor. All right, then <laughs> a little after seven, we got to oh, we got to do the prepping for Super Bowl Sunday. So we're going to do that. Reveal what you need for the best Super Bowl parties. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Remember the number to call is nine seven eight nine two six seven. That's nine seven eight WCOS. We want to hear your voice on the program. And you can always reach out to us on social media. Maybe there's something else going on you want to talk about we can bring up. You want to you want to talk about it on the air? Be sure and let us know. You know how to get in touch with us. And we'll talk to you Monday. Have a great weekend.